Well, here we are again, slowly uncovering the truth one step at a time. Now, the beauty about the system is that they never hide anything from us. They just put it in places where we least expect to find it. And to be fair, a lot of the clues are contained in the book on the left there. We just need to become more aware. Um, a lot of it is coded, a lot of it is hidden in movies and songs, but if you note the Masonic emblem down there, you may wonder or you may ask yourself why we have a Bible in a, a church, why we have a Bible in a Masonic lodge, and why we have a Bible in a, in a courthouse. These may become obvious if you actually ask the questions, but uh, I'd like to thank a friend of mine um, from down in Dunedin, Steve, for giving me a little bit of a heads up on this here called the Clearfield Doctrine, where all courts were dissolved in 2008 under the Clearfield Doctrine, and then they became registered companies on Dunedin Bradstreet. Um, and when governments enter the world of commerce, they are subject to the same burdens as any private firm or corporation. Note, under the Clearfield Doctrine, the courts are no longer government entities in that they are demanding private monies from us and they must have a contract with you to compel performance. So if you go down to the government create and enforce civil laws known as statutes, acts and legislation, which are created by the Bar Association, uh, which was set up by the Rothschilds, which are duty bound to comply with the law of contracts. Now, I've only ever taught contract law. There are other laws abounding and people want to go into all the different ones. I stick to contract law because I know that if you don't have a contract, you don't have anything. So the law of contracts requires signed written agreements and complete transparency or full disclosure, in other words. Now, this website here from Australia, DawnKelly.com, uh, she's shown the um, Australian Government Treasury uh, website. And part of that website says governments are descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private corporation when they use commercial paper. Okay, so they're, they're not hiding any of this from us, but the Clearfield um, Trust and Banking Corporation were t took the uh, United States um, government to court, and this, this was in 1942, and the doctrine says, that when private commercial paper is used by corporate government, then government loses its sovereignty, its status, and becomes no different than a mere private corporation. In other words, it can be sued like any private company. As such, government then becomes bound by the rules and laws that govern private corporations, not anything, anything they can hide behind. And like any private corporation, they must be the holder in due course of a contract or other commercial agreement between it and the one upon whom demands for specific performance are made. Now, we'll dive deeper into this shortly, but just be aware that when we're dealing with private corporations, and we'll show you how they do this in a second, uh, then they can sue and be sued. So specific performance, the term specific performance, and we used this a lot in real estate when I was in real estate, refers to literal performance of one's obligations under a contract. Should a party default on his obligation, a court may issue an order for specific performance, requiring a party to perform a particular action. Specific performance is an alternative to a court's decision to award damages and is commonly used as injunctive relief in cases involving real property. Okay, so to explore this concept, consider the following specific performance definition. It's a noun, the performance of a legal contract strictly or substantially according to its terms and compliance with one's contractual obligation as ordered by a court. Now, if we look at the New Zealand Law Dictionary, 
specific performance a court order to a person to perform the undertakings entered into by contract. Specific performance is available only when damages would not be an adequate remedy. And it gives you some um, legislation there to have a look at. But if we go in and have a look up at our, our local council, which a lot of people are starting to do over here at the moment, because um, they found out that these uh, private corporations are demanding rates, but they're not doing any of the public works that go with those rates, but they're paying themselves whopping great salaries and not doing the work around the town. So all the infrastructure of the towns are falling to pieces. But these private corporations keep demanding money and they're getting becoming real fat cats under false pretenses. But remember, the pen is mightier than the sword. So when we start to use the pen to control these unconstitutional and out of control corporations, we need to find out who we're going to send, uh, who we're going to send the letters to and exactly who is demanding money from us. So let's dive a bit deeper. To find the directors of the corporations making them on us and to write to them, we have to go into a New Zealand um, website called the New Zealand Companies Office. Now, this is where all the companies are registered. This is what their website looks like, and this is where you do your search here. So now you can find the company directors on here. You can also find them on Dun & Bradstreet, but um, in 2018, they brought out this paper because I've been writing to the directors privately at their home addresses and they don't like it. So they've brought out this paper or discussion document seeking feedback whether residential addresses of New Zealand company directors should continue to be published on the company's register if a director identification number is introduced. So they're trying to introduce a DIN so that they don't have to publish their private addresses. I wonder why that is. Do you think there could be a slight uh, amount of fraud going on here? I'll leave that to your imagination. Now we can write to the directors once we have their private um, address. We can write to them in their private and unlimited capacity. They can't behind, hide behind any oaths that they may have taken. As part of this process, we need to learn certain words, and this this would be the most important word that you can come across, and it's called stipulation, a material article in an agreement. The name given to any agreement, stipulation is an agreement. Okay, so if we go down to the bottom there, an agreement between counsel respecting business before the court, it is not binding unless assented to by the parties or the representatives. Now, another word there you need to look at is assented. Assented is to agree or approve of something. So how do we get a stipulation, an agreement, or get them to assent to something? Quite simple, really. We go to our maxims. Maxims are a collection of legal truisms which are used as rules of thumb by both judges and lawyers. They must uphold maxims. So we have a very good one. Silence is agreement. Uh, well, we're going to have a bit of trouble with the uh, Latin here, but uh, cutacit consentia viditur. The maxim provides that one who stays silent when asked for the consent, it means that he or she is consenting. Otherwise, he or she would have retaliated. Okay, so silence is agreement. So when you write to them and they do not respond within the 14 days or 21 days, however long you give them, they are agreeing to you. But, but be aware, they do play tricks and they may get an underling or a computer to write back to you to try to get you into another contract. So be aware, tell that person that they're, they're using obfuscation to, to try and elicit another contract. Don't fall for it. Just write back to the person saying, thank you for your um, agreement. They will use all sorts of tricks. But if any of you have ever sold a house, you will know that when you make an offer on a house, 
the vendor normally comes back with a counter offer. And sometimes you can go three, four, five, six, seven, eight times offer, counter offer, offer, counter offer, and just keep going back and forwards until you come to an agreement. Now, whenever they write to you, that is a counter offer. Go back, say, please answer the questions, or you have agreed silently. So these are the questions we will ask, how, when, in, in our letters I'm talking about, which is our court, by the way. How, when, why, what? As a private corporation, when did we sign a contract with you? Now, if they can't produce that contract, there is no contract, so they cannot compel performance. Were we given true, complete, certain, and not misleading disclosure? You can bet your bottom dollar you were not. So when we ask these questions, questions they must go silent otherwise they're going to disclose that there is fraud involved so if we continue to press them and we'll show you court in a, in a moment but um, if we continue to press them they must give up okay so the top in blue there is the um, the web address on Dun & Bradstreet for the New Zealand police now once again New Zealand Police used to be a government um, organisation. It's now a private corporation. Now, as a private corporation, they can get involved in civil matters. Now, they never used to be in, allowed to get involved in civil matters. But now, as a private corporation, they can get involved in civil matters. And if they do, then they are subject to, to sue and be sued the same as any private company. So bear that in mind when they overstep the mark and become involved in a civil dispute. You must start learning how to write letters. They are on the website uh, for those of you that are on the website. There are many letters on there which are all courts. A letter is a court document. Okay. Now, uh, once again, the uh, blue line up the top there is the Ministry of Social Development listed on Dun & Bradstreet. But if you look a little closer here, doing business is work and income. Now, work and income is where we in New Zealand get our pensions, where we get our unemployment benefits, etc. And if you look over on the right there, oh, sorry, just down below the first arrow there, the key principle is Debbie Power. And on the right-hand side is her address. So if you have any dispute with a private company, now, you may have signed a contract with them, but were you given full disclosure? So you may want to ask um, a young lady power there uh, for, the, for the contract and say you want to amend the contract or whatever you want to do with it. Now, in the Contract and Commercial Law Act 2017, the court may grant relief. Now, I've spoken to you about courts before, but who may be granted relief under Section 76? A party to an illegal contract or a party to a contract who is disqualifi disqualified from forcing it because of the commission of an illegal act? Now, the, any of these corporations that are writing to you and demanding money have have done an illegal act and so you can definitely get relief but if you think you're going to get it from their courts then yeah, good luck with that but what I can tell you is that the hierarchy of law will describe it all to you so at the top of the tree we have God underneath God is man followed by corporations now man's court is higher than the corporation's court because corporations are only pieces of paper and they must have someone writing on that piece of paper. But corporations being dead in law can be sued and all we have to do is in our court write a letter to them asking for disclosure, full disclosure of the contract we signed and the terms and conditions of that contract. If they haven't lived up to the terms and conditions of that contract, well, let's face it, they haven't got a contract, have they? Okay, now, the High Court rules denial of a contract. Now, a bare denial of a contract will be treated as denying only the making of the contract in fact. And if you 
have a look at here contracts for disposition of land not enforceable is unless in writing what you will find here is that the bear trustee is the one acting as trustee for our Sedicaid trust okay so any contract any contract they're just going ahead and uh, demanding stuff from us but they're not showing the contract so unless they can show the contract then there is no contract now in summary anyone demanding payment from us must have a contract with us if they don't have a contract if they can't produce the contract then they must go away to get relief we must demand the contract nothing no one else is going to do it for us so demand the contract if if they don't produce the contract and you've put a stipulation in your letter to them that if you don't produce the contract the stipulation is that this will all go away so get writing folks get writing this is the end they must they must give us remedy